my name's Maddie. If you're new to my channel, I love sewing, and today I am going to show you how I made a very special project. So, my 18th birthday is about four days from now, and I have two days to complete this dress. Now, for a little bit of context, last year I had the opportunity to make a similar birthday dress, and I ended up wearing it on our trip to England, which was right before my birthday and it turned out absolutely beautiful. Here's what it looks like. Um, it's one of my favorite dresses I've ever made, um, but I wanted to continue the tradition of making a dress for my birthday because I think it's a really cool way to see how my sewing skills have improved or changed each year. So this is year two, and like the um, description said, I'm intending to make this a Tueta Matoshi inspired birthday dress. Now, my inspiration originally came from her daisy dress, which looks like this. And I thought it was absolutely the most whimsical thing I've ever seen. If you've seen my sweater, I absolutely love sewing cottagecore inspired, kind of cutesy, kind of vintagey looking stuff. And so I thought this would be right up my alley, especially for my birthday. Now, we ran into a problem. So, um, I have the fabric. I bought this daisy mesh on Etsy. Here's the problem though, is I actually ordered this in lavender, similar to the shade of my sweater. The issue is it's light blue. And so I had to rummage through all of my uh, sewing storage and see if I could have any material that would match this. The other thing is I'm also trying to see if I could maybe find a compromise color between lavender and blue, so like a periwinkle of sorts, and see if I can still kind of get that lavender color I really, really wanted. So, the good thing is I have an extensive amount of light blue fabric left over from my Cinderella dress, if you have seen that. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out, it's pretty cool. Anyway, I also have this periwinkle color. See if you can tell the difference. <laughs> uh, but this periwinkle color, it's kind of like a light bluish, light purple. And we're going to see if it would go with the mesh um, as well as the light blue. Like the light blue and the mesh are perfect for each other, which makes me sad because I wanted it purple. Anyway, so I will show you what each of the materials look like um, with the mesh on top. And then we will go ahead and start the project from there. So. Let's go to Maddie on the floor. Okay, it's Maddie on the floor. Here's the light blue, and I kid you not, they look like they're made for each other. Here's the periwinkle shade, and I think I can pull it off. It's a little bit darker than the light blue, but I think it'll add just the right amount of purple to kind of give this a cooler look than compared to like the bright blue Cinderella looking kind of picture I was going to have otherwise. So now that I've shown you the different swatches and the material we're using, let's go ahead and show you the design I ended up drawing for this project. For this design, I decided to go with sheer puff sleeves, have a ruched bodice with several ruffles on the center front seams, and have a large gathered skirt with several ruffles at the bottom. Okay, so for the top of my dress, I will be using this portion right here for the bodice from uh, Mood Patterns Tamarind Dress. Now, if you want to find this pattern, it is completely free and you can either look in the description of my video or you can look online at moodpatterns.com. Now, for the skirt, I am gonna go ahead and use this pattern by Simplicity and I'm gonna go ahead and widen out the silhouette of the skirt here and we're also adding a ruffle at the bottom. So, let's get started. Hello everybody, I am currently coming to you from Amsterdam in our b, b that we're staying at and I didn't get an opportunity to cover the process of the bodice uh, via video at home so I decided to do it here and I think it's a great idea because the view behind me is absolutely beautiful. I will be honest, this bodice is a little bit more complex than other projects I posted on my channel so a lot of the bodice is divided into a bunch of small pieces and I will try to explain this as simply as I can but if it doesn't make sense I can probably make a more in-depth video later down the road to show you how I put this together. So I started out by 
dividing the bodice into three different sections. So we have the lining, which is the periwinkle layer, and then we have the overlining, which is made out of the daisy material. And then finally on top, we have the overlay, which will have all the really pretty ruffles. Okay, so starting out with the lining, I ended up sewing the side back and the back pieces together. Once that was done, I moved toward the front portion of the bodice, which was seven pieces overall. Now we have an underbust and an overbust. For the underbust, there were three pieces, which included the center piece of the underbust, and I added the two side pieces to it. Once that was done, I started working on the overbust, which is the cup portion of the bodice. Now there was two side bust pieces and two center bust pieces. So I added the center bust pieces together and then I connected the side bust pieces to the center bust. Once that was finished, all I had left to do was attach the underbust to the overbust. And finally, sew the completed front bodice to the back bodice. Okay, so now that I have finished the lining, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out the overlay pieces out of the daisy fabric. Now for this portion, it's a little bit different. In this case, the only difference that you really see is in the bust pieces. Now for the lining, it's built like a regular cup, but for the outside of the bodice, which will be made out of the daisy material, it is made with a more elongated side bust and this is so you can gather the pieces together to give the ruched effect now for this all i did was pretty much repeat the same steps i did for the lining except um instead of just putting the side bust and the center bust together i also had to gather them along the side Once that was completed, I moved on towards the most complex part of the project, which was the overlay. Now in the end, I really decided to just create a ruffle to cover the bust area instead of creating a full overlay because there was already two layers around the underbust. Now once I attached this to the base of the bust, I decided to gather it a little bit more in the top and then attach it to the top of the bust. Once this was completed, I decided to add ruffles down the front seams and then sew them in place. Once this was completed, I sewed the lining and the overlay wrong sides together and then flipped it inside out. Finally, I used a finishing seam to cover any raw edges and to make it look nice and neat. For the skirt, I divide it into two portions, the lining or the periwinkle layer of the skirt and then the overlay or the daisy pattern mesh. For the lining of the skirt, I cut out the skirt front and back pieces. Okay, so now that I've cut out the lining, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out the daisy overlay. And instead of doing two panels of the overlay, so for example, I'm going to have the lining pattern, the daisy, and then another daisy on top, I think I'm going to do three daisies on top of the lining, if that makes sense. So let's go do that. Once the pieces were cut out, I just sewed a straight stitch across the top so it would be easier to attach the panels together. The next thing I'm going to do is sew the sides of the skirt. Okay, so now that I have sewn the first two sides of the skirt together, I'm going to go ahead and gather it. And then we will sew the other side and then add on the ruffle. And then all we have to do left is sew it to the bodice. But what I didn't think about is that I will need to put a slit down the center of the skirt once it's gathered so I can put in a zipper for the back of the dress. But let's go. Okay, so now that I've gathered the skirt, I'm going to go ahead and attach all these scrap pieces together to create the ruffle and then we're going to gather it and then we will attach it to the bottom of the skirt. So here is all the ruffle sewn together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and gather it. So here is the finished ruffle and I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the skirt. 
Okay, Editing Maddie here, so I ended up adding a second ruffle underneath the initial ruffle just to add a little bit more dimension, and instead of just having the daisy mesh by itself, I decided to add some leftover periwinkle scraps underneath it. Then I attached both ruffles to the skirt. So now that the skirt and the bodice are completed, I went ahead and sewed these two pieces together. And once those were sewn together, I moved on to adding a zipper. Now this is the full construction of the dress, other than one crucial detail, which is the sleeves and the straps. Now the dress is originally strapless, so I had to add these straps myself, and I just went ahead and measured my lower shoulder blade and um, did that on the front and the back, and created just the straps out of layering some of the daisy material on top of the periwinkle. I then pinned the straps in place and sewed them onto the dress. was done I literally completely winged the sleeve pattern though I did base it off a uh, bell sleeve. I cut the sleeve patterns out, sewed the sides up, and uh, then I made a small cuff out of some leftover material. Which I um, then attached to the bottom of the sleeve after gathering it a little bit. Once that was done, all I had to do was attach the top of the sleeve to the straps, and that was it for the sleeves. All right, so everything's been done, everything's been completed. This definitely has been a whirlwind of a project, as you can tell since the first couple minutes of this video. But anyway, the dress is all completed, and now I'm gonna take you up to Amsterdam where we filmed the reveal at a super special location. And if you are interested in visiting this area, I do have the location written down in the description. So without further ado, here's the reveal.